are fake news. Go ahead. Democracy dies in darkness. Die meisten inhaftierten Journalisten weltweit. My name is Galima Bukharbaev. I'm a journalist from Uzbekistan. Viajar para esses países e poder gravar de fato com músicos locais fez com que a gente criasse algo verdadeiro. E eu acho que assim a gente consegue de fato tocar as pessoas. E para a gente realizar isso da melhor forma, foi muito importante a gente conseguir se manter muito fiel ao que os artigos diziam. Speech is freedom itself. It's part of the freedom. The government has to finally understand that censorship makes no sense. Absolutely. I hope this uncensored playlist would reach many people around the world. When I was young, I dreamed to be a songwriter. <laughs> Everybody, um, we will do this um, in English today because uh, two of our guests uh, speak English, um, and this is an international project, of course. Jumping, <laughs> come on stage. Um, yes, um, fake news, hate speech, filter bubbles, like these are the buzzwords. Um, when we talk about social media these days here um, in Germany. Um, the impact of Facebook, Google, Twitter, all the others, um, uh, all these services have on our democracy is um, highly debated, um, especially, of course, since um, Donald Trump uh, became president, like he was uh, the first one uh, in the video um, we presented. Um, however, um, social media has still um, a great potential um, for freedom, um, especially for freedom of expression and uh, press freedom, um, what we are for at Reporters Without Borders um, are working on. You maybe all remember um, the revolutions in the Arabic world um, in 2010. Um, they were called Facebook um, revolutions due to the power the network gave people to spread their word. Um, today, we would like um, to um, present uh, this project uh, we uh, just saw, um, in which Reporters Without Borders, together with our partners here on stage, I will present them um, in a minute. Um, yeah, we used social media to circumvent um, online censorship. Um, we will discuss the uncensored playlist um, that you probably um, already uh, heard of. This is why you are here. And we uh, will talk and discuss online freedom, but of course, um, after around about 50 minutes, um, promised, we will listen to the music um, we produced um, together with our partners. Um, I'm Daniel, uh, I work for Reporters Without Borders. Um, I'm the so-called Internet Freedom Desk Officer, so um, I am responsible for um, our work um, regarding um, online censorship, surveillance, data protection, etc. However, um, the more important uh, people today um, are sitting next to me. Um, I would like uh, to start uh, with the person uh, in the middle, uh, which is uh, Chan Ping. Um, uh, he is, <laughs> um, he is uh, a Chinese writer and journalist, a well-known one, of course. You probably uh, all know him. Um, and he's well-known especially as a commentator on contemporary affairs. He flew the country in, um, I think it was 28. Uh, uh, you need the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> um, it was 28 when you when you left the country, when you flew the country um, to Hong Kong. 
2011. 11, okay, 11. Um, but I think the repression started in 28. Um, yeah, due to pressure from the authorities and due to uh, prohibition to work. And after a few years in Hong Kong, um, he came to Germany in 2011. Um, he's now living in exile in Düsseldorf uh, and a strong critic of the Chinese government. And among others, really, really among others, in 2014, he was awarded with the Human Rights Press uh, Active, uh, Award. Welcome. Nice to have you here in Berlin. Thank you. Thank you. On my right side is uh, Lucas. Um, Lucas Maia. Um, he's a Brazilian music producer who lives in um, Sao Paulo, uh, but now at the moment in... Moving to Berlin. Moving? Yeah, you, oh, you're moving to Berlin, okay. Um, he has been producing soundtracks for advertisement for 10 years, and now he and a colleague are traveling around the world recording an album on the streets and documenting that uh, in their project Le Tour du Monde. And he uh, was uh, responsible, especially in this project, for producing um, the, the songs we will hear uh, in about, around about one hour. Welcome, Lucas. Nice to have you. Thank you. And the last one is uh, Marco, Marco Lemke. Uh, he is senior art director uh, of DDB. Um, I will explain in a minute what DDB is, and he was uh, involved uh, in the project um, from the beginning. I have to change a bit because DDB changed the people uh, that are here today because so. Uh, um, so uh, DDB, uh, DDB is uh, is an advertising um, agency based uh, in Germany with several offices, uh, also here in Berlin, uh, but also in other uh, offices and part. Uh, of the DDB worldwide uh, with more than 200 offices in more than 90 countries um, and in 2017 DDB was the most successful uh, German advertising agency in Cannes which are the Oscars um, of the marketing world and um, you were uh, that successful also because of that project. Uh, nice to have you here. Thank you. Start, uh, I would like to start with you, Chang. Um, Chang, um, you are well known all over the world and you are involved in a lot of projects. However, maybe as a starting point for our discussion um, today, maybe you can briefly explain like, what is your story, um, why did you have to leave China and what are your personal experiences with online censorship? Thank you. Thank you for your warm introduction. It's my honor to be here. And uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for your coming. My uh, journalistic uh, career began in the early uh, 1990s. I have been working as a reporter, editor, uh, chief editor, media manager, but I'm I'm well known as commentator um, uh, contemporary affairs. Uh, I have been uh, writing uh, close to 30 years, uh, championing freedom of express while uh, pleading um, uh, greater openness and uh, accountability in China. As my uh, reputation and readership grew, I came under uh, increasingly, uh, increasingly, I came under uh, the pressure of the Chinese government. In 2001, I, I was removed from position of news director of uh, 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 well-known newspaper, Southern Weekend. And uh, then, I, uh, three years later, I, I was um, the deputy, uh, de de uh, deputy editor of Southern Metropolis Weekly. And then, uh, I was removed again in 2008 after I published an article 
to discuss the um, censorship uh, um, that year's Tap 10 uprising. It's very uh, sensitive. And this time I w I am uh, I was banned totally from only print, including the, my columns uh, in, in the newspapers and uh, uh, my books in mainland China. And then in 2011, I moved, moved to Hong Kong to uh, launch a new magazine, uh, Isaac Affairs, a Hong Kong-based magazine. But I was denied uh, by the Hong Kong government for a uh, work visa and uh, have not been allowed to work there. Then I was invited um, by the Heinrich Bohr Foundation to go to Germany. After one year, stay in the Heinrich Bohr house, I, uh, I, I work uh, uh, in Germany as a journalist. I'm writing, I have been writing for the columns in Deutsche Welle and uh, uh, some columns in uh, newspapers in Taiwan and Hong Kong and Malaysia, and uh, some of my articles uh, published in New York Times and the Deutsch Zeitung. Legally, I am holding an uh, ordinary work visa in Germany, but uh, spiritually, or, or uh, in fact, I, I accept the uh, title. Uh, extra journalist, I am uh, extra, extra journalist. Uh, extra is one of the consequences of my resistance. Not only the consequence of the um, uh, resistance, but also the continuation of my re, uh, resistance. Extra allows me to uh, to hear more. Uh, uh, voices and uh, see more of the realities. Uh, exile is uh, is a kind of punishment, but you can use that to protest uh, another uh, another uh, punishment and uh, seek freedom while you lose it. And is it possible for you? You live here now in exile. Yeah. What would you say like, but is it also possible for you to reach people in China or do you address with your work people outside China? Like you say in New York Times, Deutsche Zeitung, Deutsche Welle. Is it also possible for you today to reach people um, in China or is it uh, impossible due to the censorship? Uh, technically it's possible, but uh, in fact it's difficult. In in 2016, my family uh, members in China uh, were arrested uh, by the policemen. They used and uh, executed, but in fact, they uh, they just used them as a hostage to contact me uh, to uh, ask me to stop writing. Uh, it's common. It's common for the policemen uh, to assault the uh, families in China uh, of, uh, of the dissidents, and it's common to uh, for the dissidents uh, to, to negotiate. But I uh, did an uncommon thing and refused, and I published one article in New York Times to say there is no trade in uh, freedom of speech. So the government sh shocked. The, the policeman used my brother's uh, email address and the phone number to contact me to, to pretend to be my brother. I responded, you are not my brother now, you are the policeman. I will con uh, cut off totally uh, your, uh, the, the connection of your uh, the, uh, the, the address. 
so I did. Mm -hmm. I cut off. Until now, the price is 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 so big. So uh, for almost three years, I have no contact with my families because I don't want they to become the permanent hostage uh, used by the government. This is um, this is why, for, uh, among others, because China is uh, on the. Um, uh, press Freedom Index from Reporters Without Borders. Um, unfortunately, at the very end, uh, with um, other countries, but um, especially the online China uh, censorship in China um, um, is is so intense. Uh, and you maybe know the the Great Firewall um, in China, uh, which is um, makes it people hardly impossible to to circumvent it uh, and to to just have like private conversation. Um, with, uh, with their families. Um, however, uh, today we are also here to show that resistance um, uh, sometimes uh, is successful. Um, and now I would like um, to move over to you, Marco, um, because you and uh, your colleagues uh, at DDB um, had an idea and, uh, well, you know, like, I work uh, about this topic since, like, five, seven years, like on a daily basis. Uh -huh. And then you, my, my colleague, my other, our other, other Daniel, uh, tells me the story and I, I just thought, that's great. Like, it's so simple, but it's really great. Um, how did you come uh, to that approach? Like, maybe you can maybe elaborate it a bit. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it, was, it was a long project. It didn't just happen like this. I mean, it's always a revising of ideas and ideas. And I think the project, first came up in DDB around um, a year ago, a bit longer maybe, when um, uh, two interns of us, they were uh, brainstorming on social ideas. I think we all, um, within the creative industries, always try to do ideas for social causes because it's worth it. You know, it's like, it's a nice add-on to have in the industry to be able to work on special causes or um, social causes. and. They're working and they're coming up with this idea and then um, presenting it to us and other colleagues and we found this very interesting loophole that the idea has very special. And I think that basically started the entire process of you know, contacting you guys, seeing hey, is there any opportunity within the idea of getting in contact with Chang Ping or other um, journalists to kind of then make this project or bring this project to life. So. Um, there wasn't this one little start, this one little start. Um, it was a big collaboration of many different colleagues within our office. Uh, we then got Chang Ping on board, another journalist that you saw in the video before. And they sent us two of their articles. And um, we got, we contacted Lucas, we had a good contact through one of our colleagues to him. Um, and his company said, hey Lucas, are you interested in working with us on this project? We don't know where it will lead us because we read these long articles and cannot imagine how they will ever end in songs. Um, and Lucas jumped on it straight away. He said, don't worry, I can do this. Um, and it, it was a great collaboration between all of us. We sent, diff we tried out working with different articles. We tried working with um, yeah, different journalists together, finding the best verses, the best rhymes. And then Lucas, I think you will probably later as well how he went into constructing the songs and then the only thing we have we, we, I remember the day when we received the first songs we were like oh god they're alive or we have them in our hand we listen to them and I think we all straight fell in love with the music which is the good side of it and then it was only about bringing it online um, which sounds more difficult than it is I think um, I think if I please correct me if I'm wrong um, we had to open a uh, label in Brazil, and then you're actually able to kind of upload your music if you're an amateur musician or whoever you are onto these different platforms. So we uploaded to Spotify, Deezer, Apple Music, um, and once they were online, we decided then to go public with this idea. And of course, the story is such a simple thing, and I think that's why many people, or you as as an example, felt like, oh, this is such an easy idea because this loophole to find ways 
or to find ways to make things possible um, is somehow the essence of creativity, right? Just putting different things together and um, figuring out then what new solutions to come to. Thank you. Before I go to Lucas, uh, I would uh, ask Chan again because you said, okay, well, well then we had Chan on board and um, he took uh, two articles. Maybe you can briefly explain, like, uh, these two articles, right, they were like censored in, in China. What are these articles about? Uh, um, yeah, and why were they censored? Uh, there are two of my articles involved in the music. Um, one is about uh, freedom cage. Uh, I wrote that article in uh, 2015, uh, the um, third of the May. That day, uh, you know, you and um, observed the day of World Press Freedom Day. It is important to share, not only because. Uh, there are so few Chinese people know it, but also because there are uh, two journalists come from China won the award. Both the, uh, have been present just because the outstanding uh, performances in journalism uh, trying to uh, get more freedom for their readers. So I wrote the article titled, uh, Freedom is a Changing Cage. Uh, in China, the government uh, is not shy to, to say, uh, they, they, they set a cage, freedom cage for people, but they have people believe the cage is fixed. It does not change. So, the people think uh, as long as uh, 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 careful, you can avoid uh, falling in the cage, locked, locked inside. But that's, in my view, that's one of the fundamental deceptions of the autocracy. Um, <clears throat> In fact, the cage is changed. If you if you don't fight enough, the, the, the cage is getting smaller and smaller. And uh, uh, three years later, I I want to emphasize more about the freedom cage. Uh, if you time a lot, I, I I would like to read read the conclusion of my article. Just uh, so. <clears throat> I wrote, not only are the people leaving the cage being washed, the people outside of it, yes, part of you might be, think the cage is fixed and unchanging. They rejoice at the fact that they personally are not imprisoned in the cage and think that the way to maintain their freedom is to be is to uh, tiptoe around and avoid falling in. Later do they imagine that the cage is changing shape, shrink, shrinking on one side, expanding on the other, while those in the cage have to accept uh, washing. Those on the out, outside are happy not to be locked in, to have avoided that the feet. But what they don't recognize is that the cage is constantly changing, swallowing, swallowing, swallowing um, more pieces of the world. And the, uh, briefly, uh, the other uh, uh, article is my uh, acceptance uh, speech <clears throat> of uh, of my great honor to, uh, of accepting uh, that year's uh, international uh, freedom uh, uh, press freedom award from the Canadian J 
journalist for a free uh, expression in 2016. In that article, I emphasize two, uh, uh, two points. One is that uh, freedom of speech is the beginning of everything. The second is that uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the speech, speech is freedom itself. Thank you. Um, Lucas, uh, I'm a journalist as well, um, not as successful as Chan, but um, I know more or less how to write a text, uh, maybe also like this one, uh, but I don't know anything really about music. What do you do if someone goes to you and gives you, make a sound out of it? Out of it? Like, what was your job? How did you do that? I, I, I am a music producer in Brazil, actually. I, I am a composer. And uh, what I do, songs, and uh, emotional songs, love songs, everything else, and songs for feature films. Oh, this is not love. Yeah, it's not. And when I wrote, uh, and when I, when, when I read this in the first time, I, I remember I read, I said, oh my God, I cannot make music with that. But I, I, I was with my friends and with Iris, she's my partner with that, and uh, we saw it and we, think, we thought like, all right, so this part can be a verse, can be rhymed in the end. So we decided to make poems with all the music. This thing that he said, uh, freedom, I know, speech is freedom itself. It's amazing to make a music with that, you know. So we collect some parts of the 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 the, the so entire. So you reduced it in a, you you reduced it in a way. Like yeah, I reduced it in, and I, and, mm -hmm. and I summarized this in a uh, in a way that I, I can sing and I can make rhymes without changing the meaning mm -hmm. of it. So I think that the 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 worst thing was to make a music in less than five minutes, you know. <laughs> because all the articles were so important and all the things that they said was so important to be said. So uh, the way that they present the, the website was great because we had the lyric and you can click it and you can see the entire article after. And you can like, it's, a, it's like, uh, all right, so we, left, we have the introduction and the, to the music and we're gonna listen it and we're gonna feel it and you can see all the, the article as, as, as it was wrote. So, I was thinking about the way that you said uh, the, 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 the freedom of speech and the freedom cage. And we traveled to those countries, me and my girlfriend, and we traveled through it just to feel the... Why did you do that? Like, yeah, it, it, it's because uh, when we were trying to re research about music and how we can uh, make music to be more like pop in those countries, we went there. So we went there and we collect some musicians and we record some songs on the streets and we, uh, we recorded some of the, the instruments that are in the, 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 the album, we recorded on the street. So, and actually... Uh, in public or...? No, uh, actually it, it was some kind of... Half public? Yeah, half public. And uh, no of those uh, musicians can sign the, the album, but the thing was, I was thinking about when you said Freedom Cage, uh, we were with a singer and uh, uh, it was too cold, it was 20 degrees less than zero, and it was too cold and we were inside of a pub and we were talking, chatting with a singer and she said for us like, oh, let me see your, uh, because we have a web series in Brazil and we said to her, ah, we have a web series in Brazil, uh, you can uh, look it up online. And she said, where? And, and I said, uh, in YouTube. All right, so we tried. We tried to get YouTube in China. Okay. And, and she said, like, the, and she was with the, the cell phone and she tried. And she said, why I cannot uh, get in uh, YouTube? Why, why, why I cannot connect? And I was so impressed about it and I said, because of the censorship. And she said, which censorship? And I was totally like convicted that uh, this project was great and the thing that we were doing was amazing because if the people that uh, is there, they, 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 it's, it's totally that the thing that he was saying 
it's a freedom, they feel like freedom, but it's a cage. Because it's like in the middle of it and they don't, don't feel it. I think the major reason also why for us as the creators it was, and the entire team for you to travel to the countries is because we wanted the project to be as genuine as possible. Um, we're here in the Western world kind of remixing articles and they can very easily not portray what actually the intent of a journalist might be. So for you guys to travel there, for us to really research into the history of the countries, to learn about the countries, but also building the website, how it was then presented, to show the articles, the lyrics, the music, and all the parts, the interviews together, was to show and try to be as genuine as possible to the articles and as honest as possible to the journalists. Because, I mean, without them doing these amazing things and having the courage to do these projects, I think we all wouldn't be sitting here today. Um, so thank you for that. But I think we have to be very, we have to try to be very real. If we're not, then we start becoming like we sadly do in advertising a lot, we do stuff that isn't real. We try to imitate families that aren't actually families or other stuff. So it was a new thing for you. No, it, was, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, but we have Showing to be, all the world really is. <laughs> yes, but we have to try to be as genuine as possible. And I think the traveling there, feeling how the music is made, talking to musicians, talking to people on the streets, really somehow crafted the songs how they are today. And um, yeah, and it, and it was really strange to see how the the censorship work works in each 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 country. It's really different, but they they, they had the same rules, you know, and the same roots. And uh, uh, we were in uh, uh, Egypt, and in Egypt, when you get there with cameras and microphones, if we have microphones over the camera, you you are a journalist, so you happy to, to be arrested or something and they confiscate our microphones so no you cannot talk to a camera you can film you can take photos but we cannot talk to a camera you cannot speak so we thought all right so uh, egypt is like that but when we arrive in china they don't have this it's like it's so uh, uh, undercover the way that the censorship is so for us was Totally different, and we passed through Egypt first after uh, uh, Vietnam, and we went to China after that. So when we were in China, we was totally worried about that. And when we get there, I remember that we were doing this. Uh, she was doing a film, uh, doing a time lapse with the camera on the ground, and there was a lot of people passing through it. And I remember a policeman coming, and I, and I said to her, "Oh my God, a policeman!" And the guy started to talk with her, and I said, "Oh my God, we have to, we had to leave." And the guy was just wondering where she bought the lenses, <laughs> you know. So it was totally different the way that censorship uh, uh, really worked in the country. So, uh, it, but the the main idea was to 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 see how it worked and how it works and to research about the music there how it works actually with the people pop music and stuff and to make music that really can uh, achieve the person that needs to be achieved maybe you can tell us a bit more about the artists um, because um, you already said like um, most of them couldn't um, sign uh, sign on um, how did you find them and how did you actually produce the sound as as we were on the traveling around the world uh, doing this research and composing the songs we had uh, lots of artists in our studio in Sao Paulo Brazil working uh, Cassiano my partner who lives here in Germany he was in contact of uh, with some managers around the world to to try to find some uh, singers and musicians to be part of it <coughs> Some of, the, some of those guys uh, just said, ah, all right, I mean, I love the idea. Like in Thailand, uh, he wrote for, uh, uh, I don't know, it was Thailand or Vietnam, uh, the guy said that it was too dangerous. It was Thailand. Yeah. Thailand. 
So it was Thailand. He said to the guy, all right, you're in? Nice. So he sent the article, and after that the guy said, no, uh, sorry, my manager said that I cannot sing this because, because I can die. It was not to be arrested. It was to, to die. And, 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 and Cassiano said to me, oh, oh my man, we have to stop. We have to find someone outside of the country. So this guy decided to, I cannot say that, uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, someone decided to, to, to help us, you know. And Cassiano said to him, all right, I want to pay you. And the guy said, no, I cannot receive money from outside of my country because they can see that I'm receiving this and they're going to find me. So it, it is, so it, he helped, but okay. And we found some other musicians like the, the singer uh, who is here with us today, Jazzy. And she, she sang uh, four songs actually, uh, in Vietnamese and Thailandese. And uh, she's amazing and she, she wrote a song actually that she wants to present as well. Uh, but the main thing is that she's here, you know, and everybody that works or uh, played with us in those countries, we cannot say their names and even to film them or even say that they were there. And then the songs were produced uh, and you uploaded them, maybe um, also for the audience. Um, why was that? Possible. I mean, we talk about countries like China, and in a way, don't get me wrong, but in a way, it is fascinating how that state um, is able to um, censor um, a network that connects the whole world mm -hmm. and to set up the Great Firewall and to make one one cage from 1.3 billion people, I think, who are Im uh, impossible um, to go out. Um, yeah. Why is it possible to, to upload it? Um, well, I don't know the details of why it, why it's possible, but I mean, we I can help you. Yeah, <laughs> good, thank you. No, I can tell you that we looked into it, and um, of course, we were also afraid. You know, will it be taken down the next day, or what will happen once it's online, and will it do any impact if it's only up shortly? And um, we believed in the project, everybody of the team believed in it, we put it up and then we found out once it was up that actually if the government um, of these countries does try to put them down, they have to put down the entire platform. And of course, um, these are only assumptions from our half is that they also have a lot of local artists that are kind of, they have their jobs throughout those platforms and they make money. And so if they take down the entire platform, um, they would also you know, hurt themselves a bit. So in that case, we were, I think, all very lucky that nothing happened. Um, it actually so went very well. Are they still online? They are still online. You can all listen to them on Apple Music, Deezer, Spotify. And, and, and actually, they could do it. And uh, like a precursion to this, uh, we also had the same music with, without the name of Champagne and without the real name of the article. If they, they took it off, we're gonna release another one without the name, and they cannot track this. Yeah, and we, so had, we had everything to download as well, so we, th we already went in the project with thinking, oh God, what's gonna happen if they take it down? So on the website, you could download the album, and as everybody knows, once something's online, it's hard to get away uh, and to hide in front of everybody. I mean, we were very lucky. Uh, the project had big success, I mean, in Vietnam. Um, the album of the Vietnamese artists came to uh, play seven in the iTunes chart, charts, which, which of course is a great success for the music, uh, but also and for I the entire project. Amazon wanted it as well, right? Yeah, what, what uh, was the story the, of this? Like, yes, the project was live. Amazon Music, a curator of Amazon Music, contacted us and said, hey, how can we be a part of this? How can we support you? Can we upload the um, playlist to Amazon Music services? And we said, sure, I mean, every person who can help us spread the word and um, is de was dearly appreciated. I'm honest, like, when I heard about the project, I liked the idea. Um, and however, I expected songs like, well, it's nice. <laughs> I wouldn't hear it maybe in my private life, but well, the deeper message um, is important. And now I really have to say, like, 
uh, that these songs are uh, a gr have a great message and they are um, good music. Like, um, what was or was it hard uh, in the end to to make it out of it? And what was like your? Uh, I mean, you had many choices to to make the sound of the of the of the content. Maybe like, what was your uh, idea there? It was really good to travel around those countries because we, we feel the, 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 the kind of melody that they use and the kind of instrument they use. And uh, it was really uh, inspired, you know. It was really good to, to read this, the, the, the message, and try to translate that. It, it was not hard, you know. Actually, we did this in one month. But it was not only me, it was me, Iris, was, was Marco Thomas, who was a singer of four songs, and he, he lives in Sao Paulo, but he's a Swiss. And uh, lots of people work in that, but lots of people cannot sign it, you know, because it's kind of dangerous. But it, we were so, so, so uh, proud of it that we, we said, all right, we're not going to come back to those countries, but it's okay. We did something really good. Okay. Um, Chan, um, since a few weeks, um, and you explained it uh, well, like um, censorship today in the online world works mostly that um, they either block the whole service, the whole Facebook, the whole WhatsApp, the whole what whatsoever, uh, because they're not able to block certain content on the platform. So it is technically very, very hard to, up to impossible to really say, okay, this one single post should be censored and the other should be there. So a censor has the option between blocking everything, which is not a good thing because um, then people realize that they were are censored or to um, to um, have it online, the, but then the entire one. Since a few weeks, uh, we know that Google um, is obviously thinking about a cooperation with the Chinese government to enter the market. To well, because to date Google is not available uh, in China, uh, not at all. It is blocked at all because it does not follow the rules of the governments uh, of censorship. Um, but we know now that they are thinking about it. Um, Chan, what do you think about it? Uh, is uh, a censored Google um, a potential for freedom, or would you say that it is a kind of a precedent um, and it, that it's a dangerous development? What do you, what is your opinion about that? Yeah, what about the uh, social media? Um, to China, um, it depends. It depends how people use that. You know, um, censorship is a kind of a systemic uh, tool in China, uh, it, which goes beyond, much beyond uh, what we we, we say. The, the the government put on the, uh, the, the, the the restriction the government put on the media, uh, but also it goes to every aspect of people's daily life. You know, even a, a kindergartner knows uh, you 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 have to passionately love the love the party, not oppose it. The, the education people receive tells them censorship uh, not only not the enemy of the uh, civilization, but also uh, it's a good thing to maintain the social uh, uh, stability and uh, to make our country strong. Uh, <clears throat> even and uh, until now, I, I uh, unfortunately I have to say the Chinese government uh, benefit from the internet, from the globalization, including the internet. Uh, most they uh, use 
as you mentioned, they can uh, have the outstanding people, outstanding country, uh, companies in the field to help them to control people. You know, for the government, now it's a big data uh, surveillance time. Uh, they know much better uh, uh, everything about people uh, uh, than before. Even uh, so, uh, waves and the waves, Chinese people uh, are standing up for the freedom of express. They use um, uh, various uh, ways and uh, uh, different uh, forms to, to resist. They, they, the, the Chinese, uh, the netizen, we call netizen, very uh, creative. Uh, I know there is a, a book titled uh, the, the, the 35 of May in, Ge in Germany. It's an old uh, book for, for kids. But you know, in China, we use the 35 of May to, to to mention uh, June 4th, uh, the massacre, Tiananmen massacre, or we use eight times eight, the mathematic forms, uh, equal uh, 64, just look like uh, June 4th. Uh, uh, and we, we use uh, different uh, we, uh, f forms, just like pictures, they, uh, they uh, scrub the picture, pictures or use the, uh, you know, put the, uh, the, the use a different uh, words uh, in different orders uh, and they put upside, uh, up down to avoid the censorship. And uh, the music is so uh, creative. It's it's you are joining, you are joining the, the resistance uh, uh, of Chinese people, and uh, it helpful. The music is so fantastic. Yeah. I, I, I <clears throat> it, to me, it sounds both the deeply sad and uh, brightly hopeful. It it has both. Roots and winds. It's so amazing. And I think it's part of the, uh, it, it, it's already part of the, the, the ways and the forms uh, Chinese people use, are using to uh, fight against the, the, the Chinese government control, uh, also including. The, the 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 big companies, just like Facebook, Google, they are uh, co-working with Chinese uh, government. The the the, the, the uh, netizens already use something to some metaphor, uh, some reasons, different uh, things to mock the uh, the the companies. I. I cannot say all the things would work, but it's a thing we, we use to fight against the censorship. And I think um, my last question, um, then I would also open, of course, the stage for you um, to ask questions, but um, especially I think it is so important to, of course, also use these kind of projects that, of course, are only a small light uh, but to, to, to use them also to, to make a bit of hope. Um, so uh, what will you present us uh, uh, in a few weeks or months for the next project? Are there, like, you are creative. Yeah. Um, no, of course, we are always thinking about how to further develop the project. Um, I mean, the, the first instance is, is there a possibility to make it a platform that rises further than five journalists and one album um, let, I think the internet enables people to come together, right? So why don't we enable 
journalists in censored countries to come together with music, musicians in non-censored countries and then have them work together as we work together to create something new and raise awareness, you know, and maybe there's a platform for that. But um, currently at this point, there's nothing set in stone yet. Um, I think it's important that we all carry on trying to be creative, trying to find ways or trying to help truth find a way, as we call it in the project, uh, because creativity has the chance to somehow slowly change the world into a better place, um, which we believe in, and I think I can talk to all of us at DDB, is when we work on social causes or special projects and all the uncensored predators, it set, uh, satisfies us a bit that it can work, and I think that's great, um, a great way. So hopefully, yeah, maybe something more will come. So no, great. Um, before we uh, end up this discussion here, are there any questions for, uh, from the audience? Do you, is there anything you want to know um, from the people sitting here? No problem if not, because then you would have a bit more time for the bar. Yeah, there's one. Um, my question is, uh, first of all, it's a beautiful project and congratulations for the realization of it, of course, the idea has a big weight, but the realization of such a project is really, uh, really hard uh, stuff to do, and really, really appreciate that. But my question is a uh, kind of technical question regarding the uh, the unseen, the ones that cannot be seen that were part of this project. You know, when you uh, uh, have to pay them for what they, for the creative work they did for the project. Um, for example, someone cannot know the name or cannot receive money, how did you manage that? Is there a way or...? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> from here. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, we actually just one that I really pay it and because the rest like... Uh, uh, actually, Vietnam, um, she, she doesn't... Uh, Jazzy, she lives in Germany, so yeah. we could work like with no uh, problem with the, any kind of sensor. But uh, Uzbekistan, actually, uh, the person who sings lives in, uh, the both sings, singers, they live in Ukraine. But even living there was the craziest way I, I paid someone in my whole life. Uh, because, of course, they had the studio, the paid the singers, and I, I was trying to make an international transaction, and the guy said, no. Can you send a money to a friend of mine? He lives, uh, coincidentally, he lives in Germany. Can you send like uh, the money inside a book? So I'm like, can I, why not trans just transfer the money? Then I said, just send me the address, I'd like to see where the person lives. And it was like 30 minutes from my home driving. <laughs> so I drove there and was someone that, who doesn't speak English. I don't speak, I live in Germany, I don't speak German, sorry. <laughs> And I gave this guy a money. I have no idea how was the process from there. I was thinking maybe he's a truck driver and he's driving there and he's gonna give the money to this person. But it was always like a, a not a conventional way or even the case of uh, this, this guy in Thailand that uh, helped us with the lyrics. He just said, no, I don't want the money. I just, I don't want to be traced because he really wanted to help. He wanted to sing, but uh, because he's, uh, he's yeah, people know him there. He said, he was still after his agent, his, an agent. The guy said, no, don't do that. And he said, I want to do it, but okay, I'm not doing it. But I have to help somehow. So he helped with the lyrics. And still he didn't want nothing, not because he didn't want the money, but he was afraid not to go to jail. He was afraid to go to, like, to die. Until that moment, it was just people afraid to go to jail, and that guy made me feel like, man, it's like that's really serious. Like we have to take care of like uh, names and sharing information with the others. So it was uh, even the musicians that uh, recorded in Brazil that it's not dangerous for them. Uh, can you imagine that the guy uh, plays in a big band, uh, in a huge band in Brazil, and the guy is touring? 
and is just passing by some of those countries that he recorded music that was about the government. And uh, he can be arrested or he can be like only has to come back to Brazil even. But uh, it's dangerous. So we, all the time that we invite someone, we spoke about the thing, we said about the thing. So it's dangerous. Can you and everybody wants to be part of it? Actually, there is, I don't know, maybe more than 50 musicians in this album. And uh, there is only 10 that uh, their names are there. So I really have to thanks to the people that involved in that. Anything else you would like to know? Um, but oh, I think all the three people uh, stay here and you can, you can reach them afterwards. Great. So um, before I officially will uh, close the discussion uh, and hand over then to you, uh, Lucas, uh, because you will then uh, uh, be the moderator. Um, just um, to let you know, um, we are also here today because we um, published um, the songs uh, on, I hope I pronounce it correctly, uh, vinyls. Uh, vinyls. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so we have 500 uh, of them. Um, they are uh, available since today um, for 32 euros uh, in uh, our online store. Yeah, yeah, in our, I know it. <laughs> um, 32 euros in our Fit. online store, but if you buy them uh, this evening, it's uh, only 25 euros. Um, my dear colleagues uh, over there have a few of them. Um, yeah, we would of course uh, be thankful um, to support us uh, with that. Um, and then we need now um, a few minutes to prepare the room um, for the concert. So maybe you have a, have a drink uh, on the bar. Uh, I, I was said like 15 to 20 minutes maybe at a maximum. Um, and then um, the concert uh, will start and we will then of course listen uh, to the music. And uh, you can all find the uh, playlist online under uncensoredplaylist.com. Sure. Um, please feel free to share it because that's the idea of the entire project is to share it, to spread the word um, and make, yeah, make truth find its way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.